In this video, I will show you how to use the provided Excel spreadsheet to calculate values for diatomic gases. Um, the spreadsheet is designed to hopefully be as straightforward as possible. Uh, all the places where you're going to need to enter values are these empty blue boxes right here and these empty blue boxes over here. Uh, I'm going to fill this out for iodine gas, and keep in mind that I'm only doing this as a demonstration, and the values that I'm going to enter are complete and utter nonsense. Anyhow, so we're going to say that we have one mole of gas. Let's say we're at 500 degrees Kelvin. Uh, pressure, we're going to do 10,000 pascals, or one bar. And we have two different molar masses here, molar mass 1 and molar mass 2. Uh, these correspond to the atoms that make up the molecule. So for something like I2, that's going to be two iodine molar masses. But if we had something like HCl, you'd have one mass corresponding to hydrogen and one mass corresponding to chlorine, just to keep that in mind. Okay, so now we have bond length, vibrational wave number, and the molar literature value for entropy. All of these values are literature values that you can find on the NIST webbook, as I showed in a previous video. But for this time being, I'm just going to enter in some nonsense again. Uh, keep in mind that the bond length is in meters and not in angstroms. There's going to have to be a conversion that happens there if you use the NIST value. Uh, we're just going to say the wave number is 400. One is 50. Why not? And so we arrive at the ground state electronic configuration. Um, while this box doesn't actually need to be filled out to do any calculations, uh, it's, it's there to stay as a reference for you. Um, some chemical species have different ground state electronic configurations than others. And from time to time, that can be a significant piece of information. Um, for I2, that's just a singlet that we have. You could also just type in the number one if you wanted. Okay, so what happens now is that we are seeing a lot of calculated values. Um, down here, we have some that are less interesting. But starting here, we have the quantum mechanical ground state energy values for translation, rotation, and vibration. We have the first excited quantum mechanical state. We have the energy gap between both states and the occupancy ratio of the first excited state versus the ground state. And then over here, uh, we switch to statistical thermodynamics more. We have the calculated values for the partition function, uh, the calculated values for total energy. So this is the energy of one mole of iodine gas at 500 degrees Kelvin, as opposed to a single molecule in the quantum mechanical values. And additionally, we have entropy and heat capacity. And as you can see right now, the literature heat capacity value is completely empty. And that is because we need to fill out these Schumite equation values. Uh, once again, these constants can be found on the NIST web book. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to enter in just some random values. So we're going to say that this first set ranges from 300 to 400. I'm going to enter in some numbers just like that. And now we're going to say this next set ranges from 500 to, I don't know, 1,000. Enter some more values. And pay attention that while I'm entering these values, the spreadsheet is automatically selecting the column on the right. And that's because I said that the temperature was 500 degrees Kelvin, and the range of these values starts at 500. So any range in between those two numbers would select this row. And these are used automatically by the spreadsheet and the show might equation to now calculate a literature value of heat capacity for me. And once again, this value is complete nonsense, but you get the gist of what's going on, and uh, I think you should be ready to go on your way.